Governor. Well, you know, Gary uh, ran last time. Gary Johnson has the presidential nominee and called me up and asked me if I'd like to join him. And I went for it like a barracuda because I've known uh, Gary Johnson for 20 years. We served together as fellow governors, and I think the world of the guy. He's not just a uh, world-class athlete and Ironman triathlete and climbed every the highest mountain in all seven continents, but uh, he's very serious about his politics, too. Without without ever rubbing anybody's nose or anything, he gets the job done. So I'm more than happy to take second place behind Gary Johnson. What do you say to people who say a vote for a third-party candidate is really a vote for Hillary Clinton? Well, you know, I, I see the race a little differently than I might have back in the convention in Orlando. The ice is cracking a little bit. We've seen it start to crack in Congress just this week. I've spoken with uh, a few uh, Republican members of Congress who are uh, interested in reassessing their uh, their uh, endorsements for the, the fall and, and others as well. And uh, I do a lot of the fundraising for the ticket and that's picked up uh, dramatically uh, just in the last two, three weeks. So the scenario now is not to just try to pick up a couple of states and throw it into the house where who knows what might happen. Uh, the scenario now is uh, qualify for the debates, get admitted to the debates by the end of August, first week in September. That uh, step alone would probably carry us past 15%, closer to 20%, and work on getting another 5%, which I think is a modest goal, in the month of September. And that, that would mean uh, entering the month of October with 25% in the polls. And you show me a three-party race with one at 25 who two and a half months earlier was at five, and two at 35, who two and a half months earlier were at 45, and I'll tell you who's going to win that race. It's the, it's the ticket with 25. In, the New York, in your New York years, did you meet uh, Donald Trump, and what did you make of him? I met him socially more than once. Uh, fine guy. Uh, I think uh, he was, uh, you know, understated, uh, low-key. Uh, like his campaign. Well, no, it's a different... Uh, when Donald enters the business world, he's a different guy. I mean, I think that's been proved. And I think the Donald Trump who would show up at the White House would be the business Donald Trump. It would not be the family man capable of acts of personal generosity. He just said, he just delivered a major policy speech, and he said people shouldn't put their trust in the tired old voices of the past who leave the system. Are you a tired old voice of the past? I don't know that I'm a voice of the past. <laughs> uh, you know, I think the thing about uh, the, uh, the Johnson Well ticket is that nobody can say we haven't been there and done that. And you might not like everything we did, but both of us were uh, Republican governors who were elected in blue states and came in and really did move the needle back on the fiscal position. Both those states were struggling when we came in. Massachusetts was flat on its back. I can remember the, the administration just before I took over saying we're bankrupt. We're technically bankrupt. We couldn't pay our bills as they come due. And uh, so we did a radically different approach, uh, as some may recall, who were also old and tired. Uh, Guilty. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, we, we cut taxes 21 times in my two terms and uh, uh, balanced the budget. Uh, and that is not done in Washington. And Gary Johnson equally uh, cut taxes 14 times, never raised them. We never raised them here. And that's just not done in Washington because everyone assumes that unless there's a 5% increase in every account in the budget, that's called a cut in Washington. So nobody can argue that we didn't change our states. So I don't think anyone can argue that Johnson and Orwell are incapable of being change agents. And that's maybe a difference between... Uh, us and other tickets. You know, a, a promise, I, I promise to do this, is different than I did this. Historically, nobody votes for the vice president, nothing personal. That's true. And so what I'd like to know is, what do you bring to the ticket, and how important even is it that you're on the ticket as a vice president? Well, again, Gary and I have known each other for 20 years. Uh, we make each other comfortable. I just came back from a four-day swing out west with Gary, where we had some rallies that went very well. We played backgammon on the, on the uh, plane, we played pool, and we got to the holding uh, situation uh, for uh, the rallies. So you know at least I was happy. <laughs> but uh, the truth is that uh, Gary also uh, 
enjoys to uh, kick back and uh, play those games as well. Uh, so I think having a ticket mate that you've known for a long time and that you know you're personally comfortable with, that, that is important. Uh, you may remember the, uh, when Paul Salucci and I ran together, and there was two for the price of one. And Gary and I have talked about doing exactly the same thing. If we're elected, I'm not even going to have my own staff, uh, personal staff, as vice president, because we want to uh, govern as a team. Two signatures required. The, the Wells uh, approach. Co-president. We just, Governor, we just talked to us. say that. Governor, Wait, Governor you we just about Republicans who are supporting Hillary Clinton this week. We're hearing a lot about that. You've said some very positive things about Hillary Clinton. Why shouldn't Republicans just turn and vote for Hillary Clinton if they don't like Donald Trump? They maybe well, I think the Democrats would have a very hard time, given all the promises that have been made to the electorate, uh, keeping the budget in check and, and keeping the national deficit from running out. I mean, it's, uh, it'll be $20 trillion, the national debt, by the time President Obama leaves office. And I believe about half of that is in the last uh, eight years. And you're going to see more of the same, perhaps even accelerated. That is not good for the economy. That is not good for employment. No matter what anybody says or promises, you know, I'm going to go spend an extra X trillion dollars and that will help employment. No, it won't So help should employment. these Republicans vote for you instead of Hillary Clinton? Yeah, absolutely they should. We're the only ticket out there with uh, two elected Republicans on it. Governor, Governor we just talked to, we just talked to one of your, we just talked to one of your protégés, Governor Charlie Baker. He's a moderate Republican. He said he's not going to vote for, for Donald Trump. He should be leaning towards you, but he says he can't support the Libertarian Party either. Um, how? What kind of pitch do you make to someone like that? I'm not pitching Charlie because I think he's very smart to stay out of the national campaign. As soon as he sticks a finger in it, everyone's going to come to him every morning and say, "Well, you're a, you're a gladiator in this contest now. What do you think about this sub issue?" And he wouldn't have time to govern here. I think he's doing just the right thing for him. Well, what Tell kind of pitch do you make to, to to moderate Republicans like like Baker? Oh, I say we're uh, in charge of small uh, in. Uh, uh, in favor of smaller government, uh, you know, the, the libertarian uh, aspect of our campaign is uh, entirely about smaller government and pruning back uh, the, uh, the excesses of uh, government in Washington. I personally have never seen a layer of government that I didn't think could be shrunk 10 or 20 percent by judicious analysis. And, and what Charlie Baker and I did back in the 90s was uh, zero-based budgeting, assume every account starts at zero. And if it can justify itself, say it's a health care account and it's preventive uh, medicine and it uh, uh, led to a lot of very good uh, outcomes, then you multiply that appropriation by 10. Uh, and if it's a bureaucracy that had a lot of inputs, meaning appropriations, and nothing happened, then you zero that out. That's how to really uh, cut spending. And I think that resonates with Republican voters. It resonates with conservative Democrat voters, too. Governor, have you yourself ever Secretary voted for a third-party candidate? I voted for some libertarian state reps back when I was governor and before. Yeah. Have you always been a libertarian at heart? Uh, I think so. I mean, I can remember reading Friedrich Hayek uh, back in law school. It's about when Gary began to self-identify as a libertarian. Governor, you're about to go up to the Secretary of State's office uh, when the Secretary of State uh, said two weeks ago uh, that a vote for a third party is a wasted vote. What do you think about that? Well, everybody's entitled to their point of view, and I have great uh, respect uh, for the Secretary who I've done for a long time. My analysis, however, as I was saying before, is that we have a path to run right up the middle and win the whole thing here. In fact, that's what I think is going to happen. Uh, but libertarians never tell other people what to do. So if anyone in the Commonwealth wants to waste their vote by casting in for Trump or Clinton, it's okay with us. <laughs>